Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for waiting. At this time, we would like to welcome everyone to BBVA Argentina's third quarter 2023 financial year results conference call. We would like to inform you that this event is being recorded and all participants will be in listen-only mode during the company presentation. After company remarks are completed, there will be a question and answer section. At that time, further instructions will be given. Should any participant need assistance during this call, please press star then zero to reach the operator. First of all, let me point out that some of the statements made during this conference call may be forward-looking statements within the meaning of the safe harbor provisions found in Section 27A of the Securities Act of 1993 under U.S. federal securities law. These forward-looking statements are subject to risks and uncertainties that could cause actual results to differ materially from those expressed in the forward-looking statements. Additional information concerning these factors is contained in BBVA Argentina's annual report on Form 20F for the fiscal year of 2022, filed with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission. Today with us, we have Ms. Carmen Murillo Arroyo, CFO, Ms. Inez Lanuse, IRO, and Ms. Bellen Forcarde, Investor Relations. Ms. Forcarde, you may begin your conference. Good morning and welcome to BBVA Argentina third quarter 2023 fiscal year result conference call. Today's webinar will be supported by a slide presentation available on our investor relations website on the financial information section. Speaking during today's call will be Ines Lanuse, our investor relations officer, and Carmen Mauricio Arroyo, our chief financial officer, who will be available for the Q&A session. Please note that starting January 1st, 2020, as per central bank regulation, we have begun reporting results applying hyperinflation accounting pursuant to IFRS rule IAS 29. For ease of comparability, 2022 and 2023 figures have been restated to reflect the accumulated effect of the inflation adjustment for each period through September 30, 2023. Now, let me turn the call over to Ines. Thank you, Belen, and thank you all for joining us today. As we are all aware, Argentina has ended its presidential election process, which started on August 13 with the PASO elections, continued with the general elections on October 22, and ended with a second round or ballotage on November 19, where Javier Milei from La Libertad Avanza Party was elected president, changing the current ruling party. The presidential inauguration ceremony will take place on December 10. The unfavorable macroeconomic conditions have continued to deteriorate, increasing the risk of economic and financial turbulence in the high uncertainty context of the electoral scenario. BBA research expects GDP to fall by around 3% this year, 50 basic points less than previously forecasted, mainly due to better and expected activity data. For the first month of 2024, strong corrections and increase in inflation is expected. In this context, GDP could contract 4% in 2024, 150 basic points more than what was previously expected. Referring to BBVA Argentina's performance in the first nine months of 2023, a better operating income was the product of an improvement in interest income due to an increase in the position and yield of central bank instruments and inflation-linked bonds. At the same time, the effect of interest rates on loans, mainly leverage on commercial loans, serves the operating income growth. Now, moving into business dynamics, as you can see on slide three of the webcast presentation, our service offering has evolved in such a way that by the end of September 23, Regional digital clients penetration reached 61%, while retail mobile clients reached 56%. The response on the side of customers has been satisfactory, and we are convinced this is the path to pursue in the aim of sustaining and expanding our competitive position in the financial system. Retail digital sales measured in units 
reached 93.8% in the third quarter of 2023 and represent 72.7% of the bank total sales measured in monetary value. New customers acquisition through digital channels reached 66% in the third quarter of 2023 from 72% in the third quarter of 2022. The bank actively monitors its business, financial conditions, and operating results in the aim of keeping a competitive position to face contextual challenges. Moving to slide four, I will now comment on the bank's third quarter 2023 financial results. TV Argentina third quarter 2023 net income was 9.9 .9 billion pesos, decreasing 75.9% quarter over quarter. This implied a quarterly ROE of 5.1% and a quarterly ROA of 0.9%. Operating income in the third quarter of 2023 was 167.3 billion pesos, decreasing 1% from the 169 billion pesos recorded in the second quarter of 2023. Quarterly operating results are mainly explained by one, better interest income results through public securities and liquidity instruments, and two, an improvement in low loss allowances. These effects were negatively offset by one, lower net fee income, and two, higher administrative expenses. It is worth noting a higher income from write down of assets at an amortized cost and at fair value through other compressed income of 4 billion pesos mainly due to the sale of corporate bonds. In the quarter, there is a positive effect in the income tax line, considering the final judgment dictated by the Supreme Court concerning fiscal years 2014 and 2013. Applying the accounting information framework established by the central bank, the bank has recorded a positive result of 7.4 billion pesos as of September 30, 2023. Net income for the period was highly impacted by income from net monetary position as inflation increased from 23.8% in the second quarter of 2023 to 34.8% in the third quarter of 2023. Turning into the PL lines in slide five and six, net interest income for the third quarter of 2023 was 270.2 billion pesos, increasing 8.1% quarter over quarter. In the third quarter of 2023, interest incomes in monetary terms increased more than interest expenses, mainly due to one, an increase from repos, two, a higher position and yield of public securities in particular of LELICS, and three, the positive effect of income from loans, especially from discounted instruments, mainly due to productive investment credit lines for SMEs. This was offset by the negative effect of interest expenses from checking accounts and time deposits. In the third quarter of 2023, interest income total 586.9 billion pesos, increasing 17 0.3% compared to the second quarter of 2023. This is partially due to the higher average position in LELIC, added to a gradual increase in the monetary policy rate from 97% at the beginning of the quarter up to 118% at quarter end. Interest expenses totaled 316.6 billion pesos, denoting a 26.5% increase quarter over quarter. Quarterly increase is described by higher checking account, in particular, interest-bearing checking accounts and time deposit expenses. Interest from time deposits, including investment accounts, explain 70.5% of interest expenses versus 77.7% .7 the previous quarter. Net fee income as of the third quarter of 2023 totaled 17.6 billion pesos, decreasing 44.9% quarter over quarter. In the third quarter of 2023, the income totaled 39.5 billion pesos, falling 12.1%. The quarterly decrease is mainly explained 
by a 21% fall in fees from credit cards, considering that this line includes Punto BBVA royalty program, and that there was a greater use of this program. Additionally, an increase in prices was implemented during September, not getting to upset the negative effect of inflation and denoting a 5.1% fall in fees income links to liabilities. Regarding fee expenses, these total 22 billion pesos, increasing 68.9% quarter over quarter. Greater expenses are explained by fees paid in foreign exchange transactions related to royalty affected by the devaluation of the local currency and client acquisition costs, which translates into a 4% increase in active clients in the third quarter of 2023. In the third quarter of 2023, loan loss allowances decreased 48.4% due to the release of provisions related to credit cards derived from the stability in the NPL ratio of the retail portfolio. During the third quarter of 2023, total operating expenses were 137.2 billion pesos, increasing 9.7% quarter over quarter, of which 31% were personal benefits costs. Personal benefits increased 8.5% quarter over quarter. The quarterly increase is mainly explained by the projected inflation adjustment of vacation stock provisions and variable compensations. This adjustment is applied retroactively. Quarterly increases were also affected by the 32% collective agreement increase on wages which implied a 97% accumulated increase as of the third quarter of 2023. As of the third quarter of 2023, administrative expenses increased 12.7% quarter over quarter. The quarterly increase is mainly explained by one, outsource administrative expenses, two, greater rent expenses, three, taxes, and four, an increase in software services. All of these were related to an increase in the amount of services contracted and an increase in expenses of service contracted with the parent company. Being this said, the quarterly efficiency ratio as of the third quarter of 2023 was 82.4%, increasing compared to the 52% reported in the second quarter of 2023. The quarterly increase is explained by a higher increase in expenses than income, which considers the negative effect of inflation. The accumulated efficiency ratio as of the third quarter of 2023 reached 63.8% compared to the 56.6% reported in the second quarter of 2023 and improving versus the 69% reported in the third quarter of 2022. In terms of activity, on slide seven, private sector loans as of the third quarter of 2023 totaled 1.4 trillion pesos, decreasing 4.8% and 0.1% year over year. Loans to the private sector in pesos fell 5.3% in the third quarter of 2023. During the quarter, the decrease was especially driven by a 9.4% decline in credit cards followed by an 11.7% fall in consumer loans and a 7.5% fall in other loans, which include commercial loans related to productive investment, credit lines for SMEs. The fall was partially offset by a 7.6% increase in discounted instruments, driven by the new productive investment credit line quotas. Loans to the private sector denominated in foreign currency increased 2.6%. Quarterly increase is mainly explained by a 4% growth in financing and pre-financing of exports and a 9.4% growth in credit cards. Loans to the private sector in foreign currency measured in US dollars increased 1.5% quarter over quarter. During the quarter, the retail portfolio fell 9.9% and the commercial portfolio increased 1.5%. As observed in previous quarters, loan portfolios were impacted by the effect of inflation during the third quarter of 2023, which reached 
34.8%. In nominal terms, BBVA Argentina managed to increase the retail, commercial, and Delta loan portfolio by 21.5%, 36.8%, and 28% respectively during the quarter, only surpassing quarterly inflation levels in the case of commercial loans. BBVA Argentina's consolidated market share of private sector loans reached 9.35% as of the third quarter of 2023, improving from the 8.47% a year ago. In the third quarter of 2023, asset quality ratio was 1.42% compared to the 1.38% recorded in the second quarter of 2023. The increase is mainly explained by a slight increase in the commercial non-performing portfolio linked to the increment in the foreign currency exchange rate. On the funding side, as seen on slide eight, private non-financial sector deposits in the third quarter of 2023 totaled 2.3 trillion pesos, decreasing 5.5% quarter over quarter. The bank's consolidated market share of private deposits reached 7.13% as of the third quarter of 2023. Private non-financial sector deposits decreased 5.7% compared to the second quarter of 2023. The quarterly change is mainly affected by a 17.9% decline in time deposits and a 22.3% fall in saving accounts, partially offset by a 23.9% increase in checking accounts, especially interest-bearing checking accounts. Private non-financial sector deposits in foreign currency expressed in pesos increased 1% quarter over quarter. In terms of capitalization, BBVA Argentina continues to show strong solvency indicators in the third quarter of 2023. Capital ratio reached 27.1%. The decline in the ratio was mainly driven by the impact of devaluation of the foreign exchange rate on risk-weighted assets, combined with a nominal increment of loans. Exposure to the public sector in the third quarter of 2023, excluding central bank instruments, represents 12.7% of total assets, above the 11% in the second quarter of 2023, and below the 16.8% reported by the system as of August 2023. It is worth mentioning that, as of the date of this report, BBA Argentina has distributed the six installments scheduled on dividend payments from the 50.4 billion pesos total to be paid according to the plan published on June 7, 2023, and based on the terms agreed with the central bank. The bank's total liquidity ratio remained healthy at 76.6% of total deposits as of September 30, 2023. This concludes our prepared remarks. We will now take your questions. Operator, please open the line for questions. We will now begin the question and answer session. To ask a question, you may press star, then one on your telephone keypad. If you are using a speakerphone, please pick up your handset before pressing the keys. To withdraw your question, please press star, then two. At this time, we will pause momentarily to assemble our roster. And our first question will come from Carlos Gomez of HSBC. Please go ahead. Hello, Ines. Good morning, and thank you for the results and, and for the presentation prepared for, for this call. Um, the first obvious question I have, and, and I need not quite understand it, is um, the impact of inflation in the quarter. We understand it has been higher, but you know when we compare to to the other published results, it is particularly uh, large, as reported by you. We know it is complicated. We know there are many moving pieces that come into that, uh, but perhaps uh, give us an understanding as to, uh, as to why um, it is higher for you and whether it is sustainable. Whether in, in coming quarters we should expect you to be more affected by inflation if it continues to go up. Um, the second refers to your um, loan portfolio, uh, which was 
flat in inflation adjusted term, but actually that means that you have increased your market share quite considerably from 8.5 to 9.4 percent as you published here. Um, is that a squealing strategy on the part of the bank, something that you are trying to do, you are trying to be perhaps a bit more aggressive than the others, or or just a result of how, how the quota came out? Um, and finally, I saw a 44 percent increase in checking accounts. Uh, is there any particular uh, special reason for them to increase so much? Thank you. Hi, Carlos. Nice to talk to you again. Okay, let me go through the first question. Uh, if, as you mentioned, yes, we had more inflation quite higher in the third quarter compared to the second quarter. We are talking about levels of 35% compared to 24% uh, in the second quarter. Uh, a year to date, uh, accumulated inflation of 103 as of the third quarter. Uh, probably uh, the, the this comparative effect compared to the other bank that has already reported has to do with uh, the picture as of the third quarter of 2023 that we had less of our uh, equity protected of, by, of inflation. Uh, if you see our, our report, you can see that uh, we are started to have a position of dual bonds that are tied both to uh, exchange rate or inflation adjustment. At the end of September, we didn't see that effect that clear in the third quarter, but going forward as of the fourth quarter or this year, our uh, protection of, of the equity is around uh, 100% more or less if we combine uh, third bonds, dual bonds, and uh, a real estate. So uh, that could be reverted uh, as of the first, fourth quarter of, um, of this year. Also, uh, yes, we had uh, the inflation also affecting our costs, and that also is reflected in, in our results. So, yes, it was a, a, a tough quarter, uh, but uh, we believe that it can be reverted in the fourth quarter. Uh, the second question, I'm not, I, I heard about the, the, um, the market share, uh, but could you repeat the second part of the question? Yeah. yeah. So, so the, I mean, when I look at your view uh, from, I think the private, the, pub, the, the um, market share in private loans from, went from 8.5 to 9.4. I mean, that's a significant change. Uh, the results of the banks are shrinking. You are not. So again, I wonder if it was just, you know, a coincidence that's how the quarter ended, or a, or a conscious policy to expand more than the others when some of the players are retracting or, or leaving the market. Okay, yes. No, actually, that is a key driver of our strategy. You can see that our commissions probably fell compared also to the other player, and that has to do with the intent of increasing franchise in the country. No? We are systemically growing our market share since year over year, as you mentioned, both in loans and deposits. And we're investing both to uh, in market share. If you go product by pro uh, product, we are being very aggressive in personal loans. We are gaining a lot of market share there. But again, the strategy of the bank is to gain franchise and gain market share. And that is our driver towards the year end of 2023 and again also for 2024. Our driver is to grow more than the system, no? despite that probably inflation Sometimes doesn't uh, the, the growth doesn't uh, end being uh, in real terms, but our aim is to gain market share. I don't know if that answered your question. No. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I hear okay. you. Okay, so that that was the second question, and the third question you were asking about a uh, checking account, correct? The increase. Correct. Okay, that has to do that you have to think, you have to you, you see the, the balance sheet that in, in the way the, um, the central bank asks you to present the information in checking accounts, we also have those checking accounts that are remunerated, that have a cost. And that, as of the third quarter, uh, we were increasing our wholesale deposits to uh, place those deposits uh, opportunistically in a leak and central bank instruments. So that's why that line is the side deposit, particularly checking about, is increasing. As of the fourth quarter, that will start to shrink. 
since we are starting to reduce balance sheet by reducing the, those type of wholesale deposits. Could you let us know the size of the non-remunerated checking accounts? If I don't have the figures. I, I can send you the figures later, uh, the specific figures. We don't disclose that in the present. R roughly. I mean, okay. again, you have 700, I think, in total, so I would have about 300 non remunerating, 200, 400. Um, I can check that information for you and send it if that's okay. I don't have it in front of me. But it's an important Thank number, the, the amount of, of, of checking accounts. But let me check. Hmm. Let me, if it's okay with you, I can find the information uh, and send it back nope. to you if that's okay. More, uh, of course. Let me check. Nope. Here I have some information. Wait. Uh, more or less, the non remunerated uh, checking account, it's around uh, 376 billion pesos, uh, and the remunerated around 260. But let me check those figures and send it back to you if that's okay. Thank you so much. The next question comes from Josefina Jimenez of Channing Global. Please go ahead. Thank you for this opportunity to ask a question. We're curious how might dollarization affect the bank's financial results. Uh, it would be very helpful if you give us some guidance about that. According to, at least from what we can glean, your net monetary assets uh, in, at the end of 2Q amounted to approximately 1 trillion pesos. But that net monetary position led to a, an, a loss from income from net monetary position of 48 billion pesos in, in 3Q. So if dollarization is placed into effect, how, uh, what might we expect? Should this type of loss from net monetary position be erased uh, when dollarization is in place? Because there will be no more indexation. Uh, we would appreciate your comments on this, please. Thank you. Hello, nice uh, to hear from you back again. Okay, regarding dollarization, as you know, Milay just uh, was uh, elected last uh, Sunday. Honestly, we're not seeing dollarization as a possibility, uh, nor this year, nor the following year. And there is a still a lot of information to be disclosed when the president assumes and when he will see what he can do or what he can't do. So we're not seeing dollarization as a, as a possibility. Being that said, as I mentioned before, the way in which we protect our equity to reduce the effect of inflation is by uh, two factors, the, um, the real estate that protects our, our, our equity and the SER bonds and the dual bonds that have increased our protection of equity to around 100% of the equity as of the fourth quarter of this year. So that's the way we have all the, the financial system to protect the equity of the bank. But again, dollarization is not something that we see as a possibility uh, in 2024. And if I may have a follow-up question, could you share with us the bank's uh, outlook for inflation here on without, let's say, if dollarization, in fact, does not occur in 2024, what sort of inflation uh, outlook can you share with us? Yeah, the figures that our research department is, is seeing today, no, you know that Argentina changes practically every day, but we are projecting our year-end inflation uh, around 200% for 2023, and for 2024, around 155, sorry. Being this said, you have to think that what our research department is seeing as, is that in the first month of 2024, probably you're going to have a much higher inflation. So the average inflation should be higher than 2023 during the all 2024. 
but year end it should be less. It would be 155 compared to 200 year end of uh, 2023. The other variable that the research department is is is, is projecting is uh, the monetary policy rate that is is projecting to end 2023 around 144, a little bit higher than the 133 that we have today. And moving towards the year end of 2024 at uh, around 56%. So it's, it's negative in real terms what we're seeing for next year. Uh, could you repeat that last point? You lost me on this negative. Inter uh, yes. negative. Uh -huh. The monetary policy rate that we are projecting is to end 2023 around 144 percent, which is a little bit higher than the 133 that we have today, and ending 200, uh, 2024 with 56 percent. This decrease you should see it more towards the end of the first quarter, beginning of the second when the harvest takes place, and uh, that will uh, represent a, a negative uh, interest rate in real terms. So how would that affect then your financial results? That would be a significant level of negative rates, right, in 2014. Uh, we are, despite this, we're still projecting, uh, yes, you could see a decrease in ROEs and ROAs for 2024, but uh, positive, uh, posi uh, positives in real terms. Now, with inflation, that goes from 200 to 155, but in average, in 2024, it's going to be higher than the 200. Uh, we are still seeing uh, positive ROEs and ROAs, lower but positive. Once again, if you would like to ask a question, please press star, then 1. This will conclude the question and answer section. At this time, I would like to turn the floor back to Ms. Lanuse for any closing remarks. Okay, thank you for your time, and let us know if you have further questions. Have a good day. Thank you. That concludes today's presentation. You may disconnect your line at this time and have a nice day.